Now T minus 24 minutes, 48 seconds and counting. Let's talk a little bit about the payload that SpaceX is launching today. On board this particular Falcon 9 rocket are 20 Starlink satellites. Among those, 13 feature the direct to cell capabilities. Of course, there's been a bit of news on that front in response to the hurricanes, both Helene and Milton. SpaceX and T-Mobile were granted special uh, access from the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission here in the United States, to offer essentially an early preview version of the direct to sale capability to those areas impacted by the storm to help allow those phones that have the capability to receive them. I believe that for an iPhone is iOS 18 starting at that point. If cell service is down from just uh, cell towers in the general area, you would see at the top right hand corner of if you're using an iPhone instead of like LTE or 5G, you would see T-Mobile plus Starlink or T-Mobile plus SpaceX, one of the two. And that would allow for uh, continuous access to both texts and I believe calls and some very, very limited data. But again, a brief example built out this year in response to the hurricanes of the broader capabilities that SpaceX is hoping to enable on a much broader scale as these direct-to-cell Starlinks continue to be deployed into their constellation. So far, up to this point, SpaceX has added a total of 246 direct cell Starlinks to their overall constellation. With this launch, they'll notch that up to 259. This mission set to be SpaceX's 67th Starlink flight in 2024. Each of them clocks in about 1,760 pounds or about 800 kilograms. With their solar panels in full, they have a wingspan of about 100 feet or 30 meters. They use Argon Hall thrusters for in-orbit maneuvers. They're built in Redmond, Washington, which is near Seattle. And they'll be deployed at about 174 miles or 279 kilometers altitude at a 53.16 degree inclination. A little bit different, of course, these V2 minis from their version 1.5 predecessors. They feature four times the capacity. They introduced E-band for backhaul. They used an upgraded phased array antennas. Comparatively, they're about 2.6 times heavier. And as I just mentioned, they use argon hull thrusters for those maneuvers as opposed to the previously used Krypton hull thrusters. Thanks to folks at Black Sky and HEO, here's an image that they captured of a Starlink V2 mini satellite on orbit, where you can see those solar panels extended from the main body of the spacecraft. Be launching this mission. Talking 1076 in the SpaceX fleet. Going for its 17th launch tonight. Its first mission came back on November 26th of 2022, when it lifted off from Historic Launch Complex 39A on the Commercial Resupply Services 26 or CRS 26 mission. That flight sending up a host of space, uh, science and supplies to the International Space Station. In fact, we're gearing up for CRS 31 here in the not too distant future. However, that will be reliant on whatever the weather is good enough for first the Crew Dragon Endeavor supporting the Crew 8 mission allows them to undock and splash down off the coast of Florida. After that, the Crew Dragon Freedom will undock from the forward port on the Harmony module, make a quick jaunt up to the Zenith port, 
and that will free up the forward port to allow the Cargo Dragon spacecraft on the CRS-31 flight to dock there and remain for about a month. All predicated on whenever the Crew Dragon for Crew 8 can leave, though. Coming back to the booster history, the next time 1076 flew was the second batch of satellites uh, that were flown for OneWeb, OneWeb Flight 16, by their account, part of their on-orbit internet constellation as well. It then launched the Starlink 6-1 mission on February 27th of 2023. That was followed up by a combo mission. The principal satellite was Intelsat 40E. It also had the hosted payload called Tempo from NASA, monitoring emissions in the United States. A series of Starlinks were coming up after that. Starlink 6-3 on May 19th, 6-6 on July 24th. 6-14 on September 9th, and 6-21 on October 5th. Moving on over to flight number nine, a pair of the O3B Power satellites were up to bat, numbers five and six on November 12th. That was followed up by the Avzon 3 communication satellite on January 3rd of this year. Another batch of Starlinks on the Starlink 6-40 mission on February 29th, a leap day. That was followed up by the UTEL Sat 36D mission on March 30th. A couple more Starlinks here. Starlink 6-54 on April 28th and 6-64 on June 1st. Final two missions for this booster so far were Turksat 6A on July 8th and the Worldview Legion second pair of satellites, numbers 3 and 4, lifting off on A small typo there that should actually be August 15th on that flight. Now getting some pad views of the Falcon 9 rocket courtesy of SpaceX. As a quick bit of housekeeping here, I want to note that the countdown clock you see in the upper right hand corner of the screen is a little bit different from what's in the center there. That's because our countdown clock is in real time and SpaceX is Strong coming in on a, started. a slight delay. As you just heard, that Strong Beck retract set to begin now. Should be seeing some views from either the, uh, usually from the launch tower there, the crew access tower, showing the clamp arms opening up or just adjacent to that. This camera is from one of the lightning towers, the lightning protection system. Now T minus three minutes, 16 seconds and counting. We're coming up on the end of first stage locks load. Should hear that call up from SpaceX in just a few minute, seconds here. Good call from SpaceX. Taking one last look at the wind speeds that we can see here. 16.2 uh, miles per hour, sustained 24.9 uh, 
mile per hour gust. So it continues to be quite blustery here. We'll see if that proves to be too much for SpaceX, but so far they're continuing on with the countdown tonight. Now a little more than two minutes to go before the planned liftoff of this Falcon 9 rocket. Should be hearing the call for stage two locks so load being complete in a few seconds. Stage two, lock flow complete. Good call from SpaceX. Now the Falcon 9 is fully loaded with 1 million pounds of propellant. The venting that you're seeing there in the box and now in full screen, those are the ground gas closeouts. Should be hearing a call for that momentarily. Ground gas closeouts. Good call from SpaceX as we're approaching the final minute of the count. Come back to the live chat on the other side of the planned liftoff, but for now, let's keep our focus here on the Falcon 9 rocket. One minute. Falcon 9 is in startup. With that call, the next call we should be hearing is that the SpaceX launch director is writing their go for launch. Go for launch. Good final call from SpaceX. Now less than 30 seconds before the planned liftoff now of the Falcon 9 rocket. 20 seconds. 15 seconds. And here we go. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engine ignition. And liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket on the Starlink 8-19 mission. The Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Supersonic. Now a little more than a minute into flight, some good calls from SpaceX as the Falcon 9 rocket continues to climb in the skies above Florida. Max Q. The rocket now passing through the point of greatest aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle, that call, Max Q. Coming upon a few different events in fairly rapid succession here. We'll see first stage main engine cutoff. About T plus 2 minutes, 24 seconds. That'll be followed a few seconds later by stage separation. Then the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite. That'll be followed by the bearing deployment just before the three minute mark. That call you just heard is the call for the thermal conditioning of that Merlin vacuum engine prior to its ignition. Some good tracking views this evening as the Falcon 9 rocket continues its climb uphill again, flying in a northeasterly trajectory, heading along the coast of the United States. Approaching Miko in a few seconds. There you see Miko. Stage separation. 
Pico. Stage and SES-1. Confirmed. And back ignition. And a nice view of the setting sun. Good callouts from SpaceX. Good onboard camera views here. And that dot you see in the big box, the faint glint of that Merlin vacuum engine. Hypersonic grid fins now Sorry, deploying on the Falcon 9's first stage. Fairing separation confirmed. And a good deployment of those payload fairings. And the 20 Starlink satellites now exposed to the vacuum of space for the first time on this mission. 13 of those feature the direct to cell capability. Now about three and a half minutes into flight in real time. Coming up on our next event in about two and a half minutes is when the first stage entry burn begins. That burn will last about 24 seconds in total. Those puffs you're seeing in between the grid fins in the box on the left-hand side of your screen, those are the cold gas thrusters that help to adjust the attitude or the position of the Falcon booster as it orients itself ahead of the aforementioned landing burn, or excuse me, the entry burn. Now approaching five minutes into flight. So far a nominal mission for this Falcon 9 rocket carrying its 20 Starlink payload. Less than a minute away to the start of the first stage entry burn. Falcon 9 first stage booster, tail number 1076, is aiming for a touchdown on the drone ship called Just Read the Instructions. If successful, this will be its 17th landing after lifting off for a 17th time successfully. Stage one, FDS is saved. Stage one, entry burn startup. Good call from SpaceX as the entry burn now underway. It's burn lasting about 24 seconds in total. good conclusion of that entry burn. You can see by looking at the speedometer at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Booster has been slowing down and is setting up for the landing burn coming up here at T plus 7 minutes and 55 seconds or thereabouts. So we're less than a minute away from that event. Vehicle now well below 20 kilometers in altitude and falling.
Falcon 9 now traveling below the speed of sound. That call you just heard appears to be a good burn on the upper stage engine as well so far. Coming up on the start of the landing burn here momentarily. Stage 2, terminal guidance. Stage 1, landing burn. Stage 1, landing leg deploy. Stage 1 landing confirmed. Stage 2 FTS is saved. And for a 17th time, booster B-1076 is down on the drone ship. And back shot down. Now no orbit insertion. Currently stand. This was the 17th flight for Falcon 9 booster 1076. This also marked the 382nd Falcon 9 launch to date. 97th Falcon 9 launch of 2024. This was the 327th Falcon booster reflight, or the launch of a booster that has flown at least once. This was SpaceX's 102nd launch of 2024, including two Falcon Heavy launches, as well as the three Starship flights so far this year. This was SpaceX's 121st orbital launch within the last 365 days, the 210th orbital launch from Pad 40, and the 265th overall orbital launch from this particular pad. Taking a look at the bar chart here, you can see orbital launches were sitting at 99 for the year. Looking to notch 100 in the days to come. Moving on to some recovery stats, this was the 94th booster landing on the drone ship. Just read the instructions. Marking the 279th SpaceX drone ship landing and the 355th overall SpaceX booster landing. Finally, with some industry stats, this was the 71st orbital launch from Florida. I want to pause here for just a moment to note that last year, between Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, there were a total of 72 launches from the Sunshine State, so we are very close to tying that record here in Florida. This launch also marks the 106th orbital launch from U.S. soil. This was the 116th launch of, from U.S. rocket company and the 189th orbital launch around the globe. There have been six orbital failures so far, so here's where our pie chart currently stands. The U.S. representing about 61% of it. China with a solid quarter. Russia's 11 launches represent 6% of the pie. Japan with their five. India and Iran have three apiece. The European Space Agency has two, but they are working towards launch number three with the return of the Vega C rocket, getting ready to fly in the months to come here. North Korea with one orbital launch attempt and a failure earlier this year as well. 